David Cronenberg's The Fly. Seth Brundle is working on human teleportation. A journalist by the name of Veronica is chronicling his experiments, filming and recording audio of the progress, an early example of documenting everyday life and, you know, which is what many of us do today. One day, however, one of the experiments goes wrong. Seth doesn't realize it right away, but a fly got into one of the teleporters with him, and he begins a terrifying transformation. That's all I'm going to tell you of the plot. The brilliant thing about this, I have to say, I consider David Cronenberg to be one of the few truly brilliant directors currently alive. The symbolic value of this transformation is just immense. It can be applied to so many different things. At least for the first half or so, you could say that this is essentially about a coke addict. You could say that it's about someone stricken with a deadly disease and how how it changes the relationship. There is a sort of romance between the female lead and the male lead, Gina Davis and Jeff Goldblum, and their relationship changes. He keeps going back and forth between considering what's happening to him as completely a good thing and completely a negative thing. And you could even say that it's essentially about the process of aging. The bottom line is that this is happening to him and he can't stop it, he can't control it. And what does that do to them and to him? Now, I already mentioned that Jeff Goldblum is the lead in this, and many of us consider him mainly known for, for his comedic roles, and I have to say, he really impressed me. I mean, he is funny here. The film is sometimes funny, which is good, because otherwise it would practically be impossible to watch. It is a very dark, tragic story. And interestingly enough, told in a very operatic way. I mean, the music is huge here. But he really delivers a very compelling acting performance. I mean, he has the physicality because, you know, like I said, like a coke addict. It, supercharges him, and he, he can do the fast talking that he needs to, but he's also completely convincing as a geek, you know, he's socially awkward, and I mean, one of the reasons he's inventing teleporting is because he doesn't like transportation by regular means. He gets sick early on driving back to the lab with Veronica. The special effects. I suppose they don't hold up anymore today, but they do look amazing. The the design work is also just fantastic. If you know at all who Carol Spear is, you know, a longtime collaborator of Cronenberg's, and she just does fantastic work. And here as well. I mean the moment you have something sci-fi and, you know, teleportation pods, telepods, there's a risk that they're going to look really silly, and they really don't. You completely believe it. The ending is absolutely perfect. It ends exactly where it should. And as expected with Cronenberg, it is, of course, very disturbing, very gory, very violent. Not too much, so 
I mean, if you watch the deleted scenes, I suppose there is a bit more than was absolutely necessary. But it all has a purpose. There's nothing gratuitous, really. As his theme is in several other of his films, is the idea that sex and relationships, while perhaps not destructive in themselves, can lead to destructive things. The whole thing starts to go bad after the first time Veronica and he have sex. There's a third character. It's basically this love triangle. And the ex-boyfriend and current boss of Veronica is maybe not a stalker, but just one of those exes that just really can't accept that the relationship is over, you know. I suppose that's about what there is to say. If you are at all a fan of Cronenberg, if you think you can handle just how far this movie does go, because not everyone will be able to, trust me, then I recommend you watch it. If you can handle it, you're probably mature enough to appreciate it. I'll leave that up to the individual viewer to decide. Very, very smart film, and it's about way more than it looks on the surface. Honestly, almost everything I've seen by Cronenberg is well worth watching and really makes you think, you know. I got the Cinema Reserve two-disc DVD of this, so I suppose I should talk about... I don't know if you can really tell, but this is sort of a, I don't know, metal plastic sort of cover. Anyway, this has a ton of stills two documentaries. One is only 12 minutes, but the other is either 2 hours and 16 minutes or 2 hours and 42 minutes, depending on if you watch the full version or not. And it is very, very thorough. It goes over all three levels of production, you know, pre-production, production, and post-production, and you could jump to one of them by the, the menu. And other than the fact that it's lacking David Cronenberg, it's just fantastic. Excellent. Excellent documentary. Goes over the effects, the... everything. I really... I could spend a lot of time just talking about all the stuff it goes into. The reason it doesn't have David is... sorry, Cronenberg, is that... for one thing, there was, there was scheduling conflicts. He was recording a history of violence, I believe, at the time that they put it together, and also he just didn't have that much to say because he said everything he had to say about the movie on the excellent director's commentary track, also featured here. There are magazine articles, the original short stories there, the original screenplay is there, David Cronenberg's rewrite of the screenplay is there, there are almost 20 minutes of deleted and or extended scenes and through the deleted scenes portion of the DVD and the documentary the long documentary we see a lot of I think maybe six different alternate endings and just for myself I can say I am really happy that they went with the one they did in the film let's see what else do we have yeah, there are a couple of featurettes and interviews with them from the time. You get to see Cronenberg with the hideous 80s glasses. And there are, you know, promotional, you've got teaser trailers, theatrical trailer, TV spots. Also trailers for the original Vincent Price movie, which looks fun if you like the straight out creature fleet. I haven't watched that by the way. Not sure I will. I might, I guess. I Some of them from the 50s and 60s do have a certain charm to them. And there's also a trailer for The Fly 2, which I also have not watched. 
and I don't really intend to. It looks really B-movie. It looks like it's essentially what some people might have wanted this to be. This is not a monster flick. If it is, it's a very human monster flick. It's essentially a tragedy, a drama, that happens to have, you know, a, a love story, a dramatic love story that happens to have one of the three characters in the love triangle turn into, I won't say what. And, yeah. So, final verdict, if you're at all into what this is, definitely rent, maybe even buy. I can see myself watching this many, many more times. So, that's it for this one. Hope you enjoyed it. I will see you next time.